Susie Sun, Jeff Vaughn here, and we begin KCAL 9 News at 8 tonight with breaking news out of Pomona. That's right, a pursuit turned into a standoff on the westbound 10 freeway, and we're told it just ended. Let's get to Stu Mundell in Sky 9 with the very latest. Stu? Well, Jeff, Susie, that's the car right there, the white one in the front. They just got it off the freeway. This is going to be the westbound 10 freeway, Pomona area, just past the 57. Originally, it was a pursuit. Started out in the in the Rialto area. We have some tape, though, when it came to an end. The car just stopped here on the, on the westbound 10 freeway. California Highway Patrol, they were tasked with the job of dealing with all that traffic. They had that car sitting there. Finally, they just got about a bunch of guys together, and they approached the vehicle, opened the door, and took that guy out by force and brought him into custody. Westbound 10 freeway, though, it's not recovering as quick as we'd hope. You can see it as here right now live as we pan out. You can see a lot of traffic out here for a while. The, the uh, California Highway Patrol was pushing off the traffic on westbound freeway traffic, at least off onto the 57. You can see it right there. Hopefully, they'll get those flares cleared up and the lanes will reopen. But again, this pursuit coming pursuit that turned into a standoff coming to an end out here in the Pomona area. I'm Stu Mandel in Sky 9. Back to you two in the studio. Okay, Stu, thank you so much. We'll continue to follow the story here on KCAL 9 at KCAL9.com. Now to a terrifying attack on the streets of Beverly Hills. Tonight, detectives are sharing security camera video that might help them catch the suspect. Here's KCAL 9's Dave Lopez. Detectives at the Beverly Hills Police Station are still hoping that someone from the public will recognize the video you're about to see. A man on a bike, 4 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, attacks a woman and rides off. Beverly Hills detectives say this is their suspect on a red bike caught on security video moments before he assaulted a woman who was walking near the Beverly Hilton Hotel. Can you recall the last time there was some kind of assault like this? I, I can't recall off the top of my mind. Unusual and scary. It was just before 4 a.m., but it was still just off Wilshire Boulevard on the grounds of the Beverly Hilton Hotel. What's more surprising, that it happened or that it happened in Beverly Hills? that it happened in Beverly Hills. Detectives say this video shows their suspect pedaling away after the assault headed toward Santa Monica Boulevard. Detectives also have the video which actually shows the woman being dragged away after the man gets off his bike, but detectives have chosen not to release that right now. Normally this section of Wilshire Boulevard right down the street of Santa Monica is very busy, a lot of cars, but not at 3.45 a.m. She told detectives right where I'm standing is where the man grabbed her and then dragged her down that long corridor known as Merv Griffin Way on the property of the Beverly Hilton Hotel. She was screaming and hollering and fighting him off. Eventually, she said, he must have gotten frustrated, her words, because he let her go and he ran off. She told police she did not have a cell phone, so she ran for help, found someone who dialed 911. The woman, according to police, is now recovering at home. Again, according to detectives, the woman was not physically hurt. She's badly shaken. She gave a very good description. And now they're hoping that someone, anyone, will recognize that picture. From Beverly Hills, Dave Lopez, Cake Online News. The family of Deontay Yarber is demanding justice for their son tonight. In early April, the unarmed father was killed in a Walmart parking lot in Barstow. Police say they were responding to a call about a suspicious vehicle when the driver hit them with his car. Officers opened fire, shooting and killing Yarber. Today, the family attorney revealed that Yarber was hit at least 10 times. The family wants to know why no one from the Barstow Police Department has been charged, especially one person in particular. Jimmy Alfred Walker. If, we, if our sources are correct, Jimmy Alfred Walker was convicted for a hate crime in 2010, uh, where he brutalized a black couple. Uh, he eventually uh, uh, was convicted on lesser crimes. According to the L.A. Times, Officer Jimmy Alfred Walker, who is white, was arrested and charged in 2010 for assaulting a man and using racial slurs against him. The Yarber family attorney says Walker was fired, then reinstated as an officer by a civil service commission. Barstow Police Department hasn't returned our calls tonight seeking comment. A developing story now out of North Hollywood where a standoff between the LAPD and a murder suspect is now going into its eighth hour. Sky 9 over the 7500 block of Tahunga Avenue earlier this evening. Police say the suspect barricaded himself inside a home just before noon today. A SWAT team is on the scene and so is a bomb squad. Police have evacuated some neighboring homes just as a precaution. Now to a wild pursuit today in Santa Ana. It involved two hit and run crashes in Westminster. Then came to an end when the suspect's car broke down, we're told, in Long Beach. Police originally tried to pull over that driver for a code violation, but he just took off. No one was injured in either of those crashes, and the suspect is now behind bars.
Terrorism has not been ruled out in a deadly van crash in Toronto. At least 10 people are dead and another 16 hurt after a driver in a rental van plowed into pedestrians walking along the busy Toronto street. KCAL's Kenneth Craig tonight has more on the investigation. Authorities in Toronto shut down this busy intersection Monday, moments after a white rental van jumped the curb and plowed into pedestrians. This is a tragic, tragic situation. Police and witnesses say the incident was a deliberate act. He hit every single person on the sidewalk. Anybody in his way, he would hit. Police have identified the suspected driver as 25-year-old Alec Manassian, a man who was known to officials. He had somewhat of a control over the vehicle. It wasn't as if he was swerving if he was impaired or something. Cell phone video appears to show him engaged in a standoff with Toronto police shortly before he was arrested without incident. We're making the appeal to anyone that saw anything to call the, uh, the hotline that we have. Along with speaking to witnesses, police plan to review surveillance video to determine whether Manassian was working alone. Toronto Mayor John Tory urged the public to stay positive. This kind of tragic incident is not representative of how we live or who we are. The incident happened just miles from where the G7 summit is set to be held in June. So far, investigators are working to determine the suspect's motive and have not ruled out terrorism. Kenneth Craig, KCAL 9 News. Well, the man wanted for a deadly mass shooting at a Waffle House restaurant has been arrested. Police took 29-year-old Travis Reinking into custody after an intense manhunt near his apartment. Reinking is accused of gunning down six early yesterday morning at the Waffle House in Antioch. Four of the victims have died. One of them, Aquila Da Silva, was there with his brother. He looked up to me, but I looked up to him at the same time because he was real smart. He was a real good guy. A Secret Service arrested Ryan King last year after crossing a barrier near the White House. A judge then seized his four weapons, including the AR-15 used in yesterday's shooting. That rifle was returned to Ryan King's father, who then, we're told, gave it back to his son. CIA Director Mike Pompeo is on track to be the next U.S. Secretary of State. Today, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee voted to recommend Mike Pompeo for the job. The move follows the CIA director's recent visit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Pompeo is expected to get a majority of Republican votes and a handful from Democrats. His high-quality counsel on sensitive matters has won the confidence not only of our National Clandestine Service, but also of the Commander-in-Chief. Pompeo's nomination now goes to the full Senate, where he will likely be confirmed. The March Without Borders, a week-long track from L.A. to U.S.-Mexico border in a fight for undocumented immigrants, made a stop today in Los Alamitos. That's where the city council last week voted to opt out of the state sanctuary law, which will limit how police work with immigration officials in detaining illegal immigrants. Protesters say what Los Alamitos and other Orange County cities have done, they say sets a dangerous precedent. Los Alamitos has made it very clear that they are not on our side, that they are the, on the side of anti-immigrants, and that they are against all immigrant communities and all people of color. Los Alamitos is being sued over that new ordinance. A clarification tonight from Lieutenant Governor and gubernatorial candidate Gavin Newsom. He tells the Sacramento Bee that he never went to rehab, even though he said in 2007 that he quit drinking and would seek professional help for problems with alcohol. Now, at the time, media accounts reported that he entered a rehab program. Newsom recently told the newspaper's editorial board that he has resumed drinking occasionally after a period of abstinence. Nearly one million people from Laverne to Fontana are being asked to cut back on water all week long. Let's take a look at those cities. The Metropolitan Water District of Southern California says deliveries from regional water lines are being suspended while the state does some repairs. People are then asked, being, or asked rather, to cut back on all water use and stop outdoor watering. Repairs should be finished by Saturday. The Avengers have a right to wage war against cancer. Look what landed at LAX this morning. American Airlines and Marvel Studios teamed up with the group Stand Up to Cancer to unveil a custom-wrapped aircraft to celebrate survivors and add millions more to the roster. I want to be the voice of hope. That's, that's the biggest thing for me, to instill that hope in others. Other soldiers on the battlefield, I will reach back and grab their hand and pull them through whatever we need to do. Well, these superheroes are also raising money. You can give through American Airlines' website, and the airline will give out 10 frequent flyer miles.
for every dollar donated. Ah, good old idea. Yeah, good it really looking plan is. There too. It is. Well, zero to 60 in two seconds it may sound like a typical race car, but this VW Ooh. is very different. Wow, looks very different. <laughs> we'll have details on this unplugged car coming up next. But first, here's Marquina. Thank you, Jeff. We've got big changes in the forecast. I'll let you know when you should expect a cool down. That's coming up in just a little bit. Also at 8, President Trump hosts his first state dinner here at the White House. And concerned homeowners meet at the spot where hundreds of Orange County's homeless may wind up. CBS LA is now podcasting. We have two new shows for you to listen to. CBS LA Uncut takes a deeper dive into those bigger stories that you see right here on KCAL 9. And in the air with Stu Mundell, our familiar voice from Sky 9 every night. You can find them both at cbsla.com slash audio or on your favorite podcasting app like Apple or Stitcher. New episodes every Friday.